Now let's move on to the fasting state. So the fasting state is 18 to 48 hours post meal. So we're still going to be relying on stored fuel here, but some of our few some of our storage sources have been used up by this point. So we're going to start off by saying that our blood glucose concentration has dipped. Again, this decrease in blood glucose concentration is going to stimulate alpha cells of the pancreas to secrete glucagon. Glucagon is again going to go and stimulate the liver. However, the liver has no more glycogen left, so the liver can't be performing glycogenolysis and releasing glucose into the bloodstream. So no more glycogen left in the liver. Glucagon is going to stimulate the liver to perform gluconeogenesis. So the liver will still be able to send out some glucose into the bloodstream. In this case, the liver is now going to be using amino acids as its source for uh, gluconeogenesis. And remember last time we talked about how some, some uh, carbon skeletons of amino acids are glucogenic amino acids because their carbon skeletons can be reshuffled to ultimately be used for gluconeogenesis. The liver is primarily going to be relying on fatty acids as fuel during the fasting state. So through the process of gluconeogenesis, the liver is able to spit out some glucose into the bloodstream and bring our blood glucose back up to homeostasis. The liver, uh, pardon me, the brain is still going to be very greedy and taking up that glucose as fuel because the uh, brain loves glucose, always needs some energy. So now let's look at what's happening in the muscle. The muscle also has no more glycogen left. So um, the muscle may start to undergo some proteolysis where it breaks down proteins so that it has a source of amino acids. And it will re release those amino acids into the bloodstream. Those amino acids can ultimately go back to the liver and the liver can use them to perform gluconeogenesis and create, uh, send that glucose out into the bloodstream. The, uh, the muscle tissue is primarily going to be using fatty acids as fuel during the fasting state. And so here I'm just showing you how the muscle is performing proteolysis to take big proteins and break them down into individual amino acids. Those individual amino acids get sent out into the bloodstream to be taken up by the liver so that the liver can use those glucogenic amino acids for gluconeogenesis. Okay, now let's take a look at what is happening over here in the adipose tissue. So the adipose tissue is going to be performing lipolysis. So lipolysis, again, is when we're breaking off fatty acids from its, store, from its triglycerides, from the storage form. And it'll be, the adipose tissue will be releasing these fatty acids into the bloodstream. The adipose tissue will also be using fatty acids as its fuel. So here we have the fatty acids that, be our, that are being released from the adipose tissue. And those fatty acids will be used as fuel by the liver and by the muscle. 